Stole rats. All right, guys, so I completed the stitching. I added the extra stitches on the uh, rib above the pitot tube. And then I added these stitches along the bottom of the uh, number two. It's basically just that false ridge cap on the bottom. I went ahead and put those stitches in, also just to keep it uniform. Um, they've all been ironed flat, and now I'm ready to start um, adding some poly brush over each of those seam seams so I can get ready to add the tapes. Alright guys, so I wanted to answer a couple of the uh, comments from the elevator and the rudder video along with the horizontal covering. I had to break those two up or else it was going to be an hour long video. I'm going to try to cut back on the uh, time lapse stuff because it seems get, to be getting a little repetitive. I know. Give me a comment and let me know if you guys want to see that progress in time lapse or if it gets kind of old. I kept falling asleep while I was editing it. So. Uh, but then again, I was there for it. So. Uh, a couple of comments. One was, why am I using polyfiber? Uh, a lot of comments about, why did I choose this covering system? Um, I looked really hard at Oratex. That was really the only one I considered other than the polyfiber. And the reason I settled on the polyfiber is pretty simple. The kit came with it. The kit came with all the fabric and about half of the chemicals, the paints, the brush, um, uh, the poly brush, the poly tack, all the reducers, all that was with this kit. So. That kind of made the decision easy for me. Um, if I had the decision to do over again, would I do it differently? I might. Um, the chemicals from this is, are really strong. Uh, I've heard the Stitz is a little bit better for that, or a lot better for that, because it's a water-based. Um, but honestly, I think I would, even though there's some things I don't like about it, like the fact it's one color, I think Ortex might be something I would try next time um, for the biggest reason that you'd be flying sooner. It would cut off so much of the time. Like when this is done tomorrow, it would be done. Like taped, done. It'd be finished with Ortex. Color and everything, you put them away and be like, man, my wings are ready to go on the plane. Now I've got to take it out of the jig, put it over here in the, in the storage um, machine here, and uh, put the other one in, but that one's not done. Now I've got to build a paint booth and I've got days of painting to do just on that wing. Um, there's going to be another six coats, maybe more, that have to be sprayed on that. So um, the Ortex is very attractive for that particular reason. Now the price obviously is a lot higher, but if you were to get a nice gloss quality paint job on this fabric, you're looking at pretty much the same price and a whole lot more time. So Polyfiber, easy choice for me because I had it. Uh, next time, I would look at some other options. But I do like it. It's, it's, uh, it's not difficult to do, it's just time consuming. So it's coming out real good. I'm really happy with how it looks. I think the finish quality on it's gonna look really nice. Hoping I lay down the paint properly. So next comment that was uh, kind of a prevalent one was why did I not stitch the tail? Uh, the elevator, the rudder, and the horizontal. I didn't stitch it because it's not called for. Um, you can. You can absolutely stitch it. Uh, I talked to a lot of guys and got their opinion about it. And about 90% of the guys said, why, why do it? Uh, polyfiber doesn't call for it on the tail surfaces. Kit Fox doesn't call for it on the tail surfaces. My 5 doesn't have it done. I've been flying that for 13 years with no adverse effect from not having the tail stitched. Um, would it flap less? Would it, I mean, if it's a tight, properly done job, I don't think you're gonna see any difference. Um, but maybe if you stitch it and it doesn't move at all, is it gonna last a couple years longer than not stitching it? I don't know, I can't tell you that. Um, I just weighed the pros and cons of it and decided not to do it. 
I think that with the stitches, you can see from the wing, you know, looking down the wing, I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but there's a bump at every single stitch. Well, that bump is drag. And if you add stitches to the elevator, the rudder, the horizontal and the vertical stabilizer, that's a lot of those stitches hanging out on the tail creating more drag. I don't know if it's quantifiable, but it's definitely going to be less drag if you don't do it. So um, if, if, it, if it's your plane and you want to do that, I think go for it. If it makes you feel good about it, again, you're building these planes for yourself. I weighed the pros and cons and made the decision not to do it. It wasn't like I forgot to do it. I made that decision. So I'm happy with it. I have a lot of experience with Kit Fox that don't have that, that stitching done and uh, they haven't had any problem. Um, another tip I got from the comments was this little bag here has been ha hanging out on my supply table. And I remember reading back in the polyfiber manual about it. Um, it's a Teflon sheet. And like, what? I can't remember what I'm supposed to do with this. What you're supposed to do with it is when I go to do this final iron ironing over the top of the poly brush, it's going to stick to the iron. So if you lay this Teflon between the iron and the fabric, as you do your final ironing in there, you know, especially all on these seams, put it on there and really work those seams down. One, it will save your iron from getting all gooey, and it helps those, everything lay down better, transferring the heat through the Teflon. So uh, thank you for mentioning that. I will definitely uh, be using that going forward. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else. A lot of really good comments. I really appreciate your guys' feedback on it. Um, there are some, you know, some, some positive um, critiquing. <laughs> and uh, all I have to say to that is I appreciate it, and I actually probably agree with you guys on a lot of it. Like one of the comments was, I uh, uh, wish the sound was better, and I wish you'd place more cameras so that your back wasn't to the camera all the time. Totally agree. Um, but when you go to edit this, if you have three or four cameras and trying to, to match them all up, it's a lot of work and all that work takes away from the work I can be doing here. So bear with me. This is about as good as I'm going to do for a, basically a free video on how to build a Kit Fox. Um, if I was doing this as a production and we were going to be selling these tutorials and really getting into the step-by-step, -step, we would have a lot better camera work because I'd have someone helping me I'm doing this all just by setting the camera up and moving around myself. So that, and I would love to get a remote mic so that I can move around the garage and talk and not have the sound fade as I get further away from the camera. That bothers me too. I, I try to boost that sound as high as I can in the post editing. And sometimes just there's not enough sound there to do it. All right, so I'm moving on. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the access hole um, spots in the wing. So you start by gluing down this plastic ring with Polytech right over the top of the fabric. Doing this one so I got access to the pedo. Um, doing another one down here that's on a slightly uneven surface, so I've got some weights on it. That's to access the finger screen. Um, that finger screen comes out with an elbow on it, so unless you do that, you cannot unwind it. That's a good one to know, right up against the root. Um, then the next step of that is to put a doily over the top of that plastic piece. In order to do that, you're gonna take um, so fabric and put it on a frame. I just stapled it on, pre-shrink it down to 250, 225, 250. So it's pre-shrunk so it doesn't shrink up when you go to put it uh, on the wing. So this has been pre-shrunk and then I marked out six inch or six, whatever. Basically take a gallon, uh, one of your gallon uh, paint jugs and just trace out the circle on the bottom and gives you a nice size. I'm gonna cut those out with pinking shears and then I will take those and place them over the top of the plastic ring um, after putting down a bunch of poly brush. I'll probably do two coats of poly brush, a nice wet coat, and then put the doily down on top of it. And then you want to actually tap it in with a dry brush to get it to soak up from the bottom. Once that's dry, come on and go over it again with another coat of poly brush. Guys, we're starting the uh, taping. Power has gone off again here in uh, Northern California. So 
So I apologize for the generator noise in the background. Um, that's the only way I'm able to work is with my generator on. So a couple things that I've been doing is putting all the doublers everywhere that there's a protrusion through the uh, fabric. And then I also put the access cover doilies on, reinforce the area around the uh, pitot tube. Um, also put an access cover so I can get to the finger strainer. Went ahead and cut the uh, tapes for the bottom. And the way I did that basically is cut them so that they line up right at the edge and don't overlap the, the overlap from the leading edge. I'm going to have it just behind and then when the finish tape comes over it, the finish tape for the leading edge will cover the tape and uh, there won't be anything that can lift it from the airflow. Now the bottom's pretty easy to figure out. I have some questions on how to tape the top and I'll get into that when I get to that point. Um, just because of the composite leading edge, there's some differences on how possibly to do that. Um, but I'll get into that later. Right, guys so um just about done with the left wing and had to pause because i don't have any one inch um, finishing tapes and those one inch tapes are needed to go along the false ribs all the way across the bottom the other thing i've run into and i've talked to a lot of people about it about the best way to do it uh, is this Composite leading edge kind of creates a bit of a dilemma and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So when you wrap the um, fabric, did the first, the bottom first, it came up and wrapped, you're supposed to wrap it over, uh, so there's a two inch overlap, then the top piece came over and it wrapped back to here. So there's a nice good, more than two inches in this case, um, of coverage where it overlaps. It's very solid. Um, works good. Uh, so typically what you do is then would take a finishing tape that would go over and uh, an inch past the seam. So it would come to here. Um, you can do that with a three inch and a three inch on top and then a four inch in the middle. Um, or what I was going to do is just run a six inch all the way around so it's one piece of tape. Um, I can do that. Now the other problem is these rib tapes would come all the way to the leading edge if you didn't have the composite leading edge because that stitch would come all the way up to here. So with the composite leading edge, the stitches stop at the back of it and therefore this these finishing tapes end uh, just kind of, well, right there. The other thing is the polyfiber manual calls for you to put finishing tape anywhere 
there is a seam underneath the fabric, which would also be along that uh, rear end of the composite leading edge. So that would be one running the full length of the uh, wing. Well, one of the advantages of this composite leading edge is a nice clean airflow without any dimpling between the ribs and on back. So to have a tape laying right here with the potential for these, you know, for these pinked edges to lift on that full length, um, you can do that. I'm just, I don't, I don't want to have that um, full length edge exposed to the airflow. Um, everything you do when you do these finishing tapes, you work from the back forward so everything overlaps so there's no seam that sticks up into the airflow. Um, and this would definitely leave a huge section um, potentially in the airflow. Now, I mean, you can do a real good job of gluing it down and working these edges in so that it doesn't lift and with the paint, it'd be fine. But if you get to a situation where it does start to lift, um, it'd be a pain in the ass to have to go back and fix it. And there's also going to be a lot of drag, not a lot. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how much it really matters, probably none at all. But I just, I just don't like the idea of having that, you know, that pink seam all the way across my nice composite leading edge. So the other option was to just not do the tape on the back of that composite leading edge because it's bonded to it with the polyfiber, uh, with the poly brush. It's bonded to it. It's not poly tacked to it, but it's poly brush bonded to the composite leading edge. So you're not going to get a lot of flutter or anything. I don't think there would be any any adverse um, long-term effects by not putting a tape on the back of that seam. But if I'm wrong, you got to recover the wing. So that would be a bummer. So the choice was either to not do that tape and run these um, rib cap tapes all the way to the front so that they're covered when you do the leading edge tape. Now, as you can see, I did not do that. I, I, I left them at the back of the composite leading edge. And so I talked with John at uh, McMean and uh, Josh Esser has this, he, he worked, he did it basically with the, the tape at the back of the composite leading edge. John recommends that you tape that trailing edge of the composite leading edge. So um, following their suggestion to have that double layer there, I'm gonna do that. But I don't like the idea of having the uh, pinked seam facing the wind. So what I did was I cut a piece of fabric that's going to, it's going to act as both that front tape, and then I'm going to have it come all the way up past the composite leading edge. And because there are these little runs from the back of the composite leading edge, to the back of the false rib that you would have to run like what four inch uh one inch tapes you know why not just run this past those so i'm going to run it to this chalk mark here so it's going to be right to there and by doing that i'm getting the second layer everywhere i need it i'm adding it the only weight i'm adding is fabric from here to here because this was going to be doubled up and then they're going to have that strip there anyways. So I'm adding basically maybe six inches of fabric to full length. And uh, it's going to be super clean. So it's going to be basically that fabric's going to come up over the leading edge all the way back behind the trailing edge and that's it. That's what I'm going to have the finish look like. Now I can't do that yet because on the bottom side, those one inch tapes that go on these uh, false ribs are gonna come up and this top piece is gonna overlap over the top of them. So until I get those one inch tapes, I can't put this piece on. Um, this is not something that, um, this is not the only option to do this. This is the option I chose because I want it to look um, this way. And I don't want that 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 tape running the full length of the back of the composite leading edge. So, so that's the only drawback I've seen so far to the composite leading edge is, is that how to treat that with the fabric covering because you're going to a great extent and expense to clean up that whole front of the wing and then you're gonna slap a tape on it. 
in a, in a place, excuse me, in a place that's going to potentially create drag or create lifting of that tape over time. So this is my solution. Um, I did talk to some, both John and um, uh, some other guys have done a lot of covering about it. We've come up with a way to do it without having to pre-shrink this piece. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue with Polytac about a one inch section on, on the front of it and then on the back of it, getting as tight with by hand as possible to glue it on there. Um, that's after putting two thick coats of poly brush underneath it on the on the fabric that's already there. Then gluing it down, then heat treating it, not to the full 350, but maybe like 250, 275. Get all the wrinkles out, get it super smooth, and then just put a, at least two nice thick coats of poly brush on top of this to make it really meld into one on, on the leading edge. I think it's going to come out really nice. The only seam you'll have then on the whole front of the wing is going to be this back seam right here. And then, uh, you know, your tape on the trailing edge, you do have, this is actually what I'm talking about right here. So this tape is in place at the trailing edge of the, of the wing tank, cause that's an edge. So see how the airflow is going to come up and hit this tape and possibly lift those pinking corners or pinked corners of that tape over time. Um, that would run the full length up here. So that's what I'm avoiding. Um, the other, the one other thing I want to mention is um, you, there's one other way to do it. And that's the way uh, Kit Fox has been doing it. I believe, I was, I was talking to John on the phone, I believe is what he meant. Is that you're covering the top of the wing first instead of the bottom, okay? So you get your wrap around the front of the front edge of the leading edge, covering the top. Then you take your bottom piece and come all the way from the back up over the top piece back to that trailing edge of the, of the composite part. That way you've already doubled right here. You're all the way back and you don't need to do any um, tapes on the front. Now, really, that's not any different than what I have right here, except the seam. You still have two layers here right now. So they're saying they have two layers, that's enough. They've got two layers, they're good. Well, this has two layers. If I go ahead and put a tape on it, it now has three. So you, in a sense, get a little more protection by doing it with a tape than that method. But when they wrap it all the way back up over to the back edge here, then they run that tape across the back there, and that's they're done with the tapes. They don't tape the front of it at all. So um, you can do it either way. I'm, it all will fly perfectly fine, I'm sure. It just really comes down to what you want it to look like when you're done, and it's on top of the wing. You're never going to see it. I'm sure it would have been easier just to tape it and do it like that. So, um, but I'm going to go this route. All right, guys. So I've got uh, a small delivery from Aircraft Spruce. You know, one inch tapes showed up. So I've got a hundred feet of one inch tapes. So I'll start with one of those. And if we remember uh, where I left off, I was talking about how I'm going to do this leading edge. But to start, I have to tape all of these um, false ribs. All right guys, so I just finished laying down the first coat of poly brush over the top of each of the false ribs here. I'm gonna let it dry for about a half hour and I'll come back in and do another. Um, it's funny, I was cutting all these tapes to length and I previously calculated the distance of each false rib and how many there are and decided I needed 76 feet. So when I went to order this, these one inch tapes, um, they come in 25 each. So I ordered, if I ordered three, I would have been one foot short. I could have made up that one foot by just cutting it out of a two inch. I figure why not have some extra? So I ordered four of these. Not thinking much about it. Of course, all fabric is measured in yards and not feet. So one roll is 75 feet, uh, which means I only need one roll and I have four. So, um, I could go just crazy one inch taping everything on this plane and still have plenty of one inch tape left over. So uh, st stupid mistakes that cost money, but whatever. All right, so progress report. About just over halfway done with these one inch seams. 
they look really good real saturated i'll go back over the top of them with another coat it's gonna knock this out go have some dinner snow report update about a half inch all right so finish these tapes All right guys, so I got the last coat of poly brush on the leading edge of the wing. Tapes are all dry on the bottom. Um, they'll get another coat after everything goes over it. And uh, I'm ready to lay this last big piece of fabric. Hey guys, <clears throat> happy Thanksgiving. I'm in my uh, casual work on the airplane clothing today. Um, getting ready to finish up this uh, leading edge tape that goes all around the back. <clears throat> so I'll put on the time lapse for that. But I did end up gluing the both ends of it with a little bit of poly tack thinned down. <clears throat> That's just to hold it in place so that I can iron it since it's not a pre-ironed um, piece so it doesn't shrink up. And, and make the seams wobbly. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink it right now and then it gets a coat of, of two coats of poly brush on top of that. All right guys, that came out really nice. Pretty excited about it. Uh, she needs the poly brush coat. It looks like it's ready to go. So not a single wrinkle in it. The seams held really good. Okay, the left wing is done being covered. It is ready for the spray coats and I'm very excited to get that done. Uh, it probably took, I don't know if I'm gonna break it down into hours, maybe 30, 40 hours to do. Um, that's from putting it in the jig and getting it ready to covering it um, after the wing was built that is so anyway the uh, last part I was talking about of putting this this front leading edge tape on came out really nice um, nice straight line you know poly tacking the edge and then wrapping it over poly tack the back edge and then I was able to shrink and get all the wrinkles and creases out of it get nice and tight and then cover it with poly brush you know really nice like i said i brought it all the way back to the back of the composite edge which is right here and then i brought another about four inches to the back of the false rib so i didn't have to do the false rib one inch strips right there either so one really clean nice leading edge i'm very excited about that and it's done so on to the next i'm gonna bring and put the other wing in i won't video that because uh it's the same thing. I do the same thing twice. Um, so the next video, we're going to jump into the fuselage and getting it prepared and ready to cover. Um, might do a couple modifications on some things. I'm going to really look at it and try to figure out if there's any changes I want to make before I put that covering on. Because once the cover's on there, it's kind of locked in. So uh, I might be making a couple carbon fiber pieces too. Maybe a baggage door. I don't know. We'll see what how how uh that goes but if uh you guys want to check out the next video make sure you subscribe and hit the like button on this one and the notification and i'll tell you when the next one's posted um and thanks for watching i appreciate it send me some more comments i enjoy going through all the comments and answering any questions you guys have um so until the next one all right hold the phone one more clip just want to take a look at the wing here and we'll pan over to the right and there's another wing so just like that the other one's done too um one thing i added after uh, talking to some uh getting actually some comments coming back from from this video is this tape right here 
is lengthwise over the back spar. And you can see why I did that on the other wing. See right here, it actually kind of concaves down enough between the ribs to contact the spar. And I want that to be doubled up. So put a tape on it. So I do have to do that tape on the original first wing to match that one. But otherwise, it's done. So that leading edge came out really nice again. All the one inch tapes on the bottom, everything is set and ready for the paint booth. So we have two wings, Cody. High five that. All right, so on to the fuselage.